Hey guys, this is Paul Natone from Radio Carbon Art Productions and the FedEx driver just dropped off this nice big box from my friends at Soaring USA back in California and I'm pretty excited to see what's in here. I know what it is. This is one of the first editions of a new plane they're importing now. This is the Vixen F5J uh, competition glider, light version. And uh, what's new about this, this is the new Crosstail edition, which has just come out. The V-tail edition has been out for a year or two and this is the new crosstail. What they've done is they made a four-piece wing and a two-piece fuse, so it should make transporting this big airplane a lot easier. I also designed the graphics and livery for this airplane, so I'm kind of wanting to see what, how it looks like in real life. It should look really nice. So, you know, I've got an Explorer. I have Euphoria. I love those planes, but I wanted something in a lighter airframe weight range. This is supposed to build out around 40 ounces or so, all ready to fly. So let's go ahead and cut open the box and check out all the cool parts that are going to be inside. Now here's goodie bag number one. I've got six of the uh, MKS 6110 servos for the uh, wings and for rudder elevator. Absolutely fine for a Big airplane like this, it's not going to be flying really fast. We've got servo tray, looks like, some bulkhead pieces, and looks like some tattoo uh, 4S lipos. So we're going to run a pretty small pack, but I'm going to try running these on 4S. Looks like we also have a propeller. Oh, we got some GM props here. We've got two different sizes of the GM props. These will fold into the uh, fuselage really nice. Oh, servo frames as well for the wings. So there's pack number one. Here's goodie pack number two. Looks like we have a Grappner speed control. They were out of castles. I may have one of my castle uh, ESCs in stock, which I may use, but I can definitely use that as well. And of course, we got a new motor. And this one's going to be a, uh, this is 1105 3Y, and it's got the new smaller uh, P22 gearbox, which has a slightly lower ratio for uh, higher RPMs. Now, the next thing I pulled out of the box on a was this. I go, oh, nice. They give you some uh, fin covers for your plane. And I just pulled it out. And it was so light, it just feels like a cover by itself. But no, inside is the rudder blade. Look at that. This thing weighs nothing, I swear. It weighs like 10 grams. Nice, cool shape. Reinforced. Looks like a rose cell. Very cool. Look at that. Nothing. Dun, 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 dun. So this is how you pack an airplane, boys. Lots of bubble wrap, everything taped together, taped to the box. We have wood reinforcing here for crush resistance. And everything looks in great shape here. So let's go ahead and cut some tape and bubble wrap and check out these parts. And just like with a rudder fin, this is the stab case. Feels like just the case alone. Let's see what's inside here. It's going to be a whole lot of spread toe. Yep. Look at that. Nice. Nice flap area here. Again, super light. This is like one third the weight of the stab on my Euphoria, which was already pretty light. Yeah, it's pretty squishy. It's hollow. There's no core in there. It's going to be a little gentle with that. But man, that looks cool. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Here's the joiner. Nice tahid roll in the center section. I really think that makes a big difference on how planes turn, especially with a four meter span. So I like to see that. So row cell core. Looks like it has some balsa uh, coring material on the sides here. And of course, wrapped in carbon here. It's pretty, pretty light, obviously way strong. So pretty cool piece of kit. Now let's take a look at the front part of the fuselage here. Of course, it's pre-cut for a motor. A pretty long nose moment for electric, but the tail is going to be really light. And then this is where the back part is going to join in and get taped. So you have a two-piece fuse here, so you don't have this huge long fuse. Stab comes off, rudder blade comes off easily, so you can easily transport it here. Now it does have a sticker on it. It says 66 grams, just for the shell here. It's pretty straightforward. Locating pins here. And what's nice is it has a pre-done canopy latching system, so the little spring nubs 
already on the canopy, which is really nice because it's such a pain to make those yourself. So that's going to save some build time for sure. So let's look at that spread toe on the inside and regular carbon on the outside. So here's the rear part of the fuse with the push rods. So I'm not sure yet how the servo tray and servo setup is going to be to be able to detach these and get the two pieces apart for transport, but it just slides right on there. And then you just uh, run some tape around here. It's self-aligning, some tape on, and then, then you're good to go. Pretty cool. So here's the back of the boom. It has kind of this interesting double pylon set up here. Two bolts hold on the stab. Here's the push rod. And then the rudder uses these locating pins, mounts in, and gets captured by a nylon screw in the back. So it should be pretty easy to take apart. And the push rod will attach to the uh, rudder blade. So that's pretty much it. Straightforward design here. Spread tail on the inside. And this boom's pretty darn stiff. It doesn't want to uh, definitely torque or bend. It's kind of like a, feels like a DLG as far as rigidity. So pretty cool. Here it is, Vixen 2. This is the right inner wing panel. Nice big X marks the spot. These are the graphics I designed for this plane. Looks cool. It's going to really stand out in the air. Pretty excited. So here's the inside of the wing root. I discovered the ballast uh, solution. There's a ballast tube right behind the joiner here, which is good because that means the ballast is going to go very close to the CG point. So you won't have to add uh, or take out nose weight when you add ballast. And I think I have some uh, old Explorer ballast, which should fit right in there pretty nicely. Otherwise, I'll just make some out of steel rod or something like that. So pretty cool. And another thing, see here's the joiner rod for the tip. It's got two locating pins. So pretty nice. Nice flap area. You know, cool thing I also discovered, they've added to the this too. So let's take a look in the hatch here. This thing has a factory installed LDS push rod system. Yay! No more measuring push rods. No more trying to put horns in and doing clearances. I don't know if you can really see it. It's kind of hard to see in here, but it's a built-in LDS here, built into the wiper. Oh, nice feature. That's going to save at least two hours of work per flap. Very nice. It's got high vis, black and white stripes. Should be able to drop a servo frame right in there. It's going to be a really fast build. Got to figure out some connectors and how that's going to work, but it shouldn't be too bad. So here's the tip. You can see by the reflections, it's pretty nice and shiny. And this thing is stiff. It's not squishy at all. Pretty nice spread toe. Finish is nice. Paintwork is excellent. It's not all bled through. Nice crisp lines. Here's the bottom here with the black and white color scheme. Looks nice. Root with the locating pin here, and then two incidence pins on the tip here. And what's nice is you can actually run this as a six servo wing if you really want to. If you want that extra little bit of turning control or landing control, you can do that. Now I've flown the Vixen both ways and it doesn't seem to really make that big of a difference, especially for a light electric. And here's the port here. Also has the LDS and the push rod built in, which is nice. But there's the other port for the, uh, if you want to run the extra aileron servo. Now as it comes from the factory, these are joined together, but you can cut through the little pin here and run another servo if you want. Also has the, uh, does it have LDS? No, it does not. So you're going to have to put a horn in there or something like that. Heck, I'm just going to leave it for a servo and call it a day. Mm -hmm.